from the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. It's week seven of the NFL on EA Sports. Saints taking on Justin Herbert and the Carolina Panthers. We are down on the bayou as you get a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome here in New Orleans. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Carolina Panthers and the New Orleans Saints. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game... Getting toward the halfway point of the NFL season, Week 7 is underway on EA Sports. Taken in at the three. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. So here are the Panthers now for their opening drive. Leading them out, the number six overall pick back in April from Oregon, it's Justin Herbert. But when I reviewed last week's game and saw the four touchdown passes that he threw, I thought about you during the Turkey Bowl last year. Yeah, you guys right. had the same stats, except he got the NFC Offensive Player of the Week award with his. Oh, he got touchdowns, I got picks. <laughs> I like going back watching the film with you, and we thought it was a good performance in person, obviously it was, but you thought even better on tape. It was, it was really something to watch. Yeah, what I loved was how he spread it around. A lot of people involved in the passing offense. Four touchdown passes culminated. No gain on the play. Second and 10 at the 26-yard line. Herbert just beat the play clock. He's going to loft one deep left side here. He's got it at the 15. A big play there for Carolina. 59 yards. Sometimes the one-handed catches are unnecessary, but he was trying to ward off the defender with the other, so maybe there that was just a good play. So that tells you that not only do they imagine those types of catches, they actually work on them with defenders jostling them in order to keep their concentration and haul it in. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Here's Frank Gore, the veteran who sits third all-time in rush yards. And able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. It's a game of five. Brings up here's Gore now, running out of the gun. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. Carolina. Frank Gore, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Panthers take it right down and score on the opening drive. Looking sharp on that first drive. These guys, of course, coming off back-to-back -back victories. And you see that kind of advancing into this game, don't you? You certainly do. And when you have a team that doesn't get too full of itself, even though they've won two games in a row, you get the end result that we saw there. That nice opening drive because they're sharp, they're focused, and they're locked into everything that they're doing. Prater for the extra point. And that makes the score 7-0. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. On the return, it's Washington. The Saints take over first. Here comes. 
come the Saints for their opening drive. They are led out by their 27-year-old quarterback, a two-time Pro Bowler. It's Dak Prescott. And coming off of an early season open week, and in this situation, what he told us when we sat down with him was he spent a lot of time working on fundamentals, kind of getting back to basics during that time, as opposed to having to worry about healing up or resting up. It's too early in the season. Get back to the basics, get his game going again. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. They'll run it. This is Michelle. And not much to speak of. Call it a one yard gain up to the 26. He was brought down. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. The Panthers turn to their nickel set here as they get ready for third down. Prescott. And that's complete to Dalton Schultz. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He'll get 15 and a Saints first down. Uh, Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up the touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop and it would be 0-0 right now or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown, you know, I mean, we're just getting started here. It should be a long way to go. You think to yourself, stick with the game plan, all the things you worked on in practice. But you have some teams that when they get down, their natural tendency is to aggressively strike back. And let's see if they want to get outside of the game plan we expect and try and be aggressive on their first series. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Throwing on second and eight, Prescott escaping the pressure right. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Raekwon Davis on the stop. That's a gain of five. Brings up third and three. Prescott from the gun. And that is incomplete. And that one off the mark. A little late with a throw. So on fourth down, kicking it away here, Michael Pilardi. Back deep is Gunnar Olszewski. And there's a work of art right there. Out of bounds at the two-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. And they will begin with, should we call it, far from ideal starting field position, their own two-yard line. So what's your definition of ideal? The, the one-yard line on the other side of the field. Yes, exactly right. So yes, your definition is apropos in this case. Second and four. Justin Herbert looking to throw on second down. His throw incomplete. Denzel Mims, the rookie, the intended receiver there. And it's third and four. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. And he finds a man. It's Olsen. And he is going to have a Panthers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The Panthers have the first. It's a gain of 12. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. First and ten, Herbert. 
That'll be caught. Rager with it. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. 25-yard line. A gain of four. It's now second and six. And again, Herbert. The throw caught by Kumaro. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. 15 yards on the play. First down. That's a pretty throw right there. That ball's in the air a long time, but it's right on the money on the right sideline. A really good route. Moving the defenders towards the middle of the field before breaking to the sideline. What a completion there. Big time arm strength. Very nice route. A couple of first downs have them to the 40 now on first and 10. They run with Gore out of the shotgun. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. A seven-yard pickup brings up Alex Gore. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. A gain of three on the play. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll make this a second down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. With the score, Panthers seven, Saints nothing. Now on second down, this is Gore. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 23 yards to pick up there. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. again here on first down a strong broken tackle on that one and then they get him to the ground just shy of the 15 a solid run on first down gain of seven leaves him with a second and three and three now a draw play for Gore and he stopped immediately there time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. No gain on the play. Brings up third down. They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Week seven action, and we've got a seven-point game here in the second quarter. And this offense hoping to change that right here. And the Panthers are going to be set up with a first and goal. He couldn't quite reach the chalk, but they'll have it at the one-yard line. A gain of five brings up second and goal. They'll try to run it with Morris. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. Carolina. Alfred Morris. His first touchdown on the year. And the Panthers add on to their lead. It's not much as perfect in football, but that's about as close to it as you're going to get. Score, force a punt, score again. And both drives were impressive. The opening drive was, that last one was. Now on the other side, though, what's your psyche? You're really behind the eight ball. You got to make sure you just hold in there. Survive the early storm, relax a little bit, and try and get back to your game plan. It's way too early for panic. And it's good to make it 14-0. That one was an extended drive. 14 plays all told. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. They're staring at a two-touchdown deficit, 14-0 to score as they regroup with first and 10. Prescott to throw it. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. He finds his target, it's Schultz. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. Now Prescott. Like it's going to be two empty possessions now to start this football game. I think they're going to have to sit down and talk about what worked for them last week in their win. Sometimes you over game plan, overthink things, get back to what works. A 40 yard punt, no return, and the Panthers will take over now, first and 10. And our focus now shifts to Frank Gore. And he's well on his way to a 100 yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of who they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Second down six. Herbert. He's got Denzel Mims, the rookie from Baylor. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. Rookie to rookie on the hookup there, and it's a first down. And so many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing, but as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. First down, it's score. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout as there's a Saints player down here on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Here's Gore. And good running, going to get this down close to a first at the Saints 32. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. A five-yard gain on the play. First down, Carolina. Now Herbert with it, looking to pass. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. So they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. On second down now, Gore. Four yards on the pick up there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Going to throw on third down with Herbert. He dumps this off underneath to Gore. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 yards and a Panther first down. Two minutes to play first half. It's 14 to nothing. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. And the Panthers are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. 12 more yards there and another first down. 
Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Here's first and goal, and gosh, points here. A chance maybe to put this thing away before halftime. He's got it for a Panther touchdown. Denzel Mims, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Panthers, they widen their lead. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Crater on and the extra point. touchdown set now to kick this one away and off it goes and this will make it into the end zone and this will not be brought out it's a touchback at their own 25 yard the New Orleans offense set to take over and some dangerous territory You're already down three scores a three and out here or an inability to put any points up this one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. That's to his running back, Sonny Michelle. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there. Oh, Prescott stripped. And it's picked up by the Panthers. Every week we hear talk about create turnovers, create turnovers. In particular, they wanted to force some fumbles. They got one right there. And it shows you how the game has changed over time. It used to be good enough for a guy to get a sack of a quarterback in the pocket. Now, if you come to the sidelines and you didn't knock the ball free, your coaches are upset with you. All right, so if you're a quarterback, it starts all the way back in the youth leagues. Take care of the ball, take care of the ball, take care of the ball, because here come the defenders. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Herbert following the turnover. He finds his man, the tight end Olsen. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Here's Herbert. This ball complete to Rager. The Panthers going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Herbert on first down now. Able to connect to Mims. And they'll get this down to the 10. 11 more on that one and another first down. A gain of 11 on the play. First down. Herbert back to the air. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. A loss of 13 yards. It's second down. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. They'll spot it at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. And the 13-year man puts it through. And that stretches this lead even further. It's now 24 to nothing. Saints nothing. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. And able to get this out to the 25. And the white flag coming out as they line up to kneel on it. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. 
As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. A lot to get to here as some of the division races starting to take shape as we look around the NFL here in week number seven. We'll get started over at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in downtown Atlanta. And it's the Lions who are out in front as they play the second quarter. Allen Robinson, a touchdown reception. Next, we head off to check out another game. And they trail that one over the visiting Green Bay Packers. Deshaun Watson has thrown a touchdown pass. Finally, let's get you to Baltimore. Check on the Ravens at home at M&T Bank Stadium. And that one all tied against the visiting Steelers. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Saints going to go on offense first, and they trail here as we begin quarter number three. great to be a Pro Bowl quarterback, all pro wide receiver. Those guys get all the endorsements. But we've seen a lot of guys carve out a great career as a special teams ace. And it's one of the most important parts of the game. We can talk offense and defense all we want, but the third phase, special teams, that can be the difference between winning and losing. And how about the big play created here? Big time effort, and that can help his team. Second straight week, he's forced to fumble. A play fake, and now Herbert to throw. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Brings up second and ten. Second and ten. Here's Herbert once more. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Picked up by the rookie from Florida, C.J. Henderson. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted, but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. They'll try to get this offense going with Michelle. And he'll be taken down at the 18. Michelle, the ball carrier. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. A gain of five brings up. And it's Michelle once again. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Looking to throw. Prescott. Good job there keeping him to a short gain. Of course, he's coming back for a really terrific performance. Reigning NFC Defensive Player of the Week. And I know people get caught up in, well, if you're the reigning Defensive Player of the Week, you must have made a bunch of spectacular plays. Like you mixed in a few of those. But most of the plays are just like we saw there. Keep them to short gains, make the fundamental tackle. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So here are the Panthers set to take over. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. Out of the gun, Herbert. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Denzel Mims that time. But it'll be second down. It's now second and throwing again. Herbert, he's got this one completed to Mims. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 33. 11 yards for number 11. First down, Carolina. Herbert setting up to throw on first down. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. 
It's now second and six at the 29-yard line. To the air again, Herbert. That caught left side, Olsen. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 12 yards there and a first down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. On first down, goal. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Drops it underneath the goal. And the Panthers are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. But they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the back. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. Carolina. It's the fullback. His first touchdown on the year. And the Panthers have got it on cruise control. Well, they weren't messing around. First and goal, they don't do anything fancy. They just go to the fullback right away. I like how you phrase that because oftentimes they come back to the fullback when it's late in the down and distance count, right? In this case, first down, let's go get it right now. And he got it six points on the board. Now Prater to add the PAT. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. First and 10 at their own 24-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They can just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working and call more of that. Preston Williams, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. You get the sense that they're saying we're not playing up to what we're capable of and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. Brings up third and five. Prescott from the gun on third. And third and that's complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 17 there and a New Orleans first down. There's a nice pickup right there. And after watching that play, I'm thinking about all the lost opportunities that they've had so far in this game. But right now, just focus on continuing to move the ball the way they did on the last play. First and 10, Prescott. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. A.J. Epinesa. Credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. Another try after the first down sack. Prescott, and he will find his man on the outside. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. 
On third down, it's Prescott. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Schultz. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. Now Michelle. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember, the last drive, they went three and out. Nothing in that first half, nothing on the last drive, but they're moving now with a first and 10. On the ground, this is Michelle, and he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Back now here live in New Orleans. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. The last run got a couple here, second and eight. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. Now he'll escape to his right, and he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. Brings up third down. Third and short yardage, Prescott. He'll get this one to Galladay. And he is going to have a Saints first down, and comfortably so, as he gets five there on third and a yard. And that'll be enough to keep the drive moving forward. Another first down on the pickup of five yards. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Finally, a first red zone opportunity for these guys. They've got a first and 10 at the 17. They'll run out of the gun with Michelle. And they get to him quickly here as he stops right around the 13. Julian. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Again, it's Michelle. And strong running there as he's inside the 10 and down to the 8-yard line. It's a 5-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Ball had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. The Carolina offense about ready to go. Now this game is all but over after that last fourth down stop. The only question left, will they play conservative and run the clock or try to pour some salt in the wound? They'll try and start the drive here with Gore. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves them with two to go on second down. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Bring second and two at the six. They'll stick to the ground game with Gore. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. It's a Panthers first down, 17 yards on the play. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. 
That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on the play. Brings up second and ten. At the 40 yard Back line. to the workhorse today. It's Gore. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Brings up third down. And this carry number 20 for Frank Gore. And he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot. Four yards on the pickup there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. This is taken at the 18. That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. Their mini two-game win streak appears it might be going by the wayside unless they can pull a rabbit out of their hat. Off the play fake, Prescott. This is Jeff Swain, the tight end. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. First and 10 at the 38-yard line. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And he'll get that to Michelle, complete. And he'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and that'll bring up second down. And we are inside of two minutes left in this lopsided affair. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Coverage on the play by Prescott on third and two. here just continues this defense I don't know what more we can say all around about their performance well, it certainly feels in this game like maybe they're facing a Canadian defense 12 guys on the <laughs> field it feels like there's an extra on every snap because they have really struggled to make headway through the air Carolina getting set to take the field and this game it could very well turn out to be the shocker of the weekend not too many expecting them to come in here and win and they're not just winning they're dominating and now trying to finish this one off a gain of three second down well, that's just a pile of bodies there and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy right who can stand up and make a play it was only a three yard run but for both sides they had to walk away from that feeling like okay I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. 48-yard line. It's a gain of four. And it's third down. On third down, they'll run with goal. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. So this 
this one is over. A victory for Carolina. And I tell you what, Charles, this might be about as good as it gets. They were incredible. Yeah, offense was in fine form. The defense threw the shutout at them. I think they worked in concert together. What I like about the offense was they held the ball pretty well. You know, time of possession, exactly what they were looking for in this one. And that helped out their defense. Didn't have to be out there the entire time. So when you do that and you're out there fresh playing, off a little extra spring in your step, and it showed up in this one. They had a ton of spring in their step. Impressive victory. So for Carolina, they fall a game under 500 now at three up and four down. And they'll head back home next week to take on the Atlanta Falcons. Meanwhile, for New Orleans, the loss will drop them to four and two on the year. And they'll try and turn things around next week as they have a date at Soldier Field with the Chicago Bears. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.